Welcome to Twin Bridge Dairy Goats. We're glad you're here. It's about family, farm, and our girls. We're located in beautiful central Oklahoma where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. Share our experiences, what we've learned, what we're still learning. It's about triumphs as well as failures. <laughs> they love me. It's not they the easiest so thing much. you can do. There are always challenges, but it's the best <laughs> life for us. I love we you, believe love you should learn something every day. Or Follow us on our journey. There's always something going on at the farm. So come along. Good morning, This friends. is what happened today. Okay, here we go out to the milk barn. Whew, the sun. Whew, look how beautiful. Look how beautiful. It's a beautiful day here in Oklahoma. You know what? I'm gonna change my route to the barn. I actually had one of our, our uh, subscribers comment on how beautiful our irises are in front of the garden. And so I will walk that way and show you guys. These were all transplanted from our son's property and uh, my brother's property. And slowly, slowly over the years, they have actually filled in and created us a nice border in front of our garden uh, fence. We have chicken wire down um, along the garden to keep the chickens out, but you guys know that don't always work. I've got a rogue chicken that keeps getting up in the garden, <sighs> uprooting my lettuce. I'm not very happy about it and told Brian last night he's actually gonna have to clip some more wings. But anyways, here we go. I am walking, see how beautiful they are. I've got some purple and some yellow and some, ooh, the sun's blinding me. Light purple there in front of the garden. I absolutely love them. They're absolutely gorgeous. Anyways, I would love to have some more yellow and my sister-in-law actually said she had some white ones and I thought, hmm, that might be kind of pretty in there. But so we have them all in front of the garden. We also have them around the storm shelter, which is a nice little touch to that area. But on the way out to the milk barn, I feel like I'm getting a slow start this morning, but really I'm not. It's um, 7.30 on uh, Monday morning and I'm just now walking to the garden, but um, it's a beautiful day here in Oklahoma. I'm looking forward to the day. We have got several things planned this morning that we have to take care of. Brian actually beat me out here this morning and he's already changing the water buckets and getting them all cleaned up. I have all my milking uh, jars and bucket and pail. Uh, there was a lot of jars to carry this morning because we actually put Belle in the um, lineup. We're going to milk Belle this morning. She is four weeks fresh, so that's exciting. We're gonna add her to our lineup and uh, milk her. We actually moved our milkers, our three consistent milkers over here on the south side. Belle's bucklings, which are over there in the closed birthing stall, we're in the pen with all of these girls. And you guys know that these are my yearlings out here and my girls that are, have not been bred. And I don't need that. I don't want that. So I brought everybody over here, all of the uh, mamas over here because this area has two by four welded wire up along the uh, fence panels and they can't slip through the fence but anyways let me turn you guys around and show you so here are <laughs> oh, the littles <laughs> oh, beautiful beautiful kids beautiful boys beautiful boys except for this this little one right here that's the only little doling to say this was not a buck year would be lying, <laughs> flat out lying. We have had a buck year. If you guys follow us on the Facebook page, I gave a count after Jasmine had her bucklings, 11 to four. But look at those boys. Oh, well, you really can't see them because daisies are shading them, but Wow-wee, wow-wee, beautiful boys, beautiful boys. 
He is blue eyed. He is not. Gorgeous, gorgeous little bucklings. But anyways, Belle is going to be milk this morning. Oh, Jasmine. We've got several things planned this morning. We're going to be out here for a while. I'm going to put Belle up on the stand, say, take some pictures of her third freshening udder. Third freshening, but I told Brian, I wonder if you could say it's her third freshening, but really it's only her second udder. Second freshening udder because last year she had no udder. Because of all of the uh, illnesses she was dealing with. So, oh, see, looky there. That's a cobalt block. That's awesome. That's something that we added to the yards because we were having some issues with some uh, milk not tasting quite right and was told that maybe adding a cobalt salt block would help. That is something that they need, which it is in their sweet licks uh, minerals, but maybe there wasn't enough. But anyways, Belle, she's looking awfully skinny. She's putting everything she's got into her milk. And so I'm going to be spending some time trying to get her, get some weight on her and, uh, so she can continue feeding those boys back there. Both of those boys have been sold and will be going to new farms. But, and the uh, little girl is also sold and going to a farm in Missouri. Super excited, super excited about that. Uh, the little black with white belt, he is available. And of course, these two little bucklings back here will be available. Oh, cousin love. They love each other. They really do love each other. But anyways, guys, I've got to get started. Like I said, we've got a lot of things planned today. We are going to be milking. We have got to disbud those boys. We're gonna try to weather Mulan's two bucklings over in this pen, <coughs> which you can't see them, excuse me. They haven't come out from underneath the shelter. But let me go over here and see. <laughs> oh, little fatty fatties, my word, you little chub. <coughs> My word, you little chub. Anyways, that's one of the bucklings that will be banded this morning. Oh, there's our keeper. There's our keeper. Good morning, Jack. Good morning, Jack. How are you doing? Are you doing okay this morning? Oh, you little fatty. You little fatty. Jack! Hey. Oh, you want some attention too, Vaughn? Do you need some attention? Are you choking yourself on the fence? Oh. Our beautiful Vaughn. Well, I guess they're not going to come out here and greet me this morning. There. Hey, buddy. This is our other little buckling that we are going to be dis uh, banding. And, of course, we will be doing a video on that and that procedure. Jack is a buckling out of Louisiana. And Vaughn Miller He's a tub this morning. Jack is giraffe pulled. F1 mini Nubian. And I am going to uh, use him this fall. 
hopefully, to get uh, more polled genetics in my herd. And then my mind at this point is that I will be sending him to a new farm after I use him this fall. Because you guys know, I've said it before, we are bringing in a, a buckling uh, from Green Gables. Which I'm super excited about. And of course we will uh, give you guys all the highlights when that gets close. It's about a month away, but I'm super excited about that. Anyways, I've got to get started. Got to get started this morning. My morning's going to get away from me, and I won't get anything accomplished. Very quiet, quiet day other than hearing the highway. <laughs> Anyways, that's something else that we're going to be doing is drawing blood. Gracie, Molly, and Gabriella. I am going to draw blood on those three this morning and uh, run that over to the university uh, tomorrow and see about pregnancy testing, which out of those three, this girl right here is who I'm thinking is probably bred. We shall see. We shall see. Anyways, I have got to get started this morning. Here's our little blue-eyed Jasmine boy. And look at this. Look at that. Just budding. Just How about budding that? job. You want to see that copper ring around those buds? Because that kills the nerves feeding that horn bud. Dairy goats for show and for safety purposes uh, in our herd, we disbud. Uh, they have to be disbudded if you do plan on showing um, dairy goats. That is a rule with uh, MDGA and ADGA. Most of your uh, registries don't allow horned animals in the show ring. But anyways, success on uh, the little blue-eyed buckling that has black moon spots. I think that's what we're gonna we're gonna say. Mm -hmm. I will do a little bit more research to make sure. But um, anyways, gorgeous little guy. Okay, here's the second little jasmine boy. This this little guy has brown eyes. And he actually is roaned, which roaning is these white hairs in his moon spots. That's what roaning is, white hairs in, in their spots a lot of times. But anyways, his uh, bedding, disbedding job turned out fantastic also. Anyways, guys, now it's time to band. Not these boys, though. Okay, friends, we are in the back of the barn today because today's the day these little boys are going to be banded or weathered. That is a process that removes their ability to breed. It removes their testicles. These are the only two that's up for that right now. I have two uh, little bucks, actually three little bucks that are um, not quite old enough yet and I will continue to uh, watch them and uh, make those decisions as time goes on. But these little boys are about 15 weeks, I think, 15 to 16 weeks old <laughs> and it's time to go ahead and, and get them banded. They're, um, their testicles have dropped down into their sacks and it's going to be fairly easy to do that. We have done this uh, for several years now 
But, um, and the reason why we banned, I have stated in previous videos that I'm going to band uh, very heavily this year. My goals for this, this year and moving forward is to breed to the standard of a mini Nubian. Breed characteristics, correct confirmation, uh, in the herd because we do not need to continue putting bucklings or bucks out there that do not meet those standards or that confirmation. Um, it just, it, it just doesn't help us as a, um, as many Nubian breeders to be offering animals that don't conform. And these little boys don't conform. Uh, these are Mulans, little bucklings, and um, which, you know, she is a gorgeous doe. And um, I have kept a doling out of her. Chloe is Mulan's uh, daughter and a full sister to these boys. These boys are Vaughn's sons. But for some reason, I just haven't ever felt the need to um, retain or, well, I know the reason. I know the reason. I haven't had a buckling out of Mulan and Vaughn that I would consider retaining. That's just flat out. And, and used for breeding purposes. I have not sold a buckling out of Mulan and Vaughn for several years. And, you know, I, in early on when we took on uh, the mini Nubians, I did sell uh, bucklings out of Mulan. And looking back, a newbie mistake. Newbie mistake. Sure. And so anyways, moving forward in the learning process, the longer we've had uh, the mini Nubians, the, the more you learn the more my eye uh, looks for those characteristics, those um, flaws, I guess, and I can see them. This little boy right here, I'm not happy with his nose. He has got kind of a dished nose, looks to me like, and so does the one that Brian is um, petting. Just not super impressed with that. And so why would I um, sell him and put him back in um, the stock for breeding purposes if he doesn't even match the um, characteristics, breed characteristics? Just I'm just not going to do it. Um, Mulan's udder is nice. And early on, she was giving me half a gallon or so. But, you know, this is her sixth kidding. But I just haven't been real impressed with her udder either. And so, um, sons tend to carry their mother's genetics and pass on their mother's udders. And so, I'm just not going to do that. So, these boys are going to be banded and weathered and they will be perfect companion animals or pet animals uh, to a, a family or to another farm. M goats in general are herd animals and need companions. They are not happy being alone. When I sell any goats, any kids, I make sure that they are going to a home that has kids about the same size because you don't want to put a eight week old kid in with adult an adult herd they will just get beat up so it's always good to offer a weathered animal along with them uh, so that they have a friend and can be separated and uh, not be alone if that makes sense makes perfect sense to me <laughs> but anyways, we'll we'll get started and show you guys the process. First thing we're going to do is we have our alcohol, the banding tool, and cotton balls. 
and we're gonna clean him up really good. These boys are super fat. Just on, just on hay. Is cleaning the area where the band goes around. And then we're going to use the tool to slip that band around the testicle. But in the process, we are gonna make sure that both of the testicles are in the sack. I'm going to do some adjusting here. Sorry guys, I zoomed in on the camera. I'm gonna try to keep my head out of the way. Okay, so you can see that he's he is fully developed and both of his testicles are in his sack. I can feel them right here. There's, there's one and there's the other one. The band is going to go up around these and close off any blood circulation. Uh, the nerves to stop feeding this area and that way he won't be able to breed. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that, oh, and for those of you that are new to goats or don't know anything about goats, male goats also have teats. Why? I don't have any re any idea why. I don't need anything causing any bacterial issues. Use a couple of cotton balls if I need to. And mind you, this is painless. This is not going to hurt him. Um, he might have a, I guess I shouldn't say that because I really don't know, but by their actions and what they do, I've never seen any there's no evidence that he is in, they are have been in discomfort. Okay, can you twist him just a little bit? No. To me. His bootay needs to be level. There we go. And really, he could probably slide off your lap just a little. Pick him up and put him up against your chest more. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's more of a natural. Okay, so then we're going to take, I'm, I'm hoping that you guys can get this. We're going to take this and open this band and slip it over. Okay, so you want to get, just make sure before you let go of this band that both of his testicles are down in his sack. You want to get them as close to the teats as possible. And then I'm just going to flip this back. One. There's two. There. There we go. Done. Goodness sakes. Okay. Both of his testicles are in that band area. I'm going to grab a cotton ball with some. And go ahead and clean around this area again. Close to his teats, his teats are still here and here. Band is up around the top of his testicles. Testicles are in the sack. There's one and there's the other one. Go ahead and clean this area for some reason. But anyways, looks gross. All right, and you can see he's just fine. Look at how fat he is, oh my goodness. Chat later. Moon spots. I think that's what we're gonna we're gonna say. Mm -hmm. I will do a little bit more research to make sure. But um, anyways, gorgeous little guy.